I don't like the font, but I like saying the name. Yeah, maybe those lights are called Budmo lights. I don't know. Budmo Jiggler. All right. Every single one of you should be able already to fill in every blank down to stating the domain and range of this graph. Go. The lesson that I have for this graph is not going to come until after you've filled all this in. You all should be able to do this already. No pressure, but you have 30 seconds. He's going to use 15 of them going, oh my God, I only have 30 seconds. What am I going to do? Ah. Uh. Descent is, yes. I have a strong sense of rhythm. <laughs> what are you two laughing at? If you miss Phineas and Ferb, then why don't you just follow the vlog brothers? Of course, because SpongeBob is stupid. <laughs> no, absolutely not. That's ludicrous. No, they're not. Cartoons can, are, can make you, they're satire. SpongeBob is stupid. Uncle Grandpa is stupid. New Teen Titans is stupid. All of them are dumb, but there are plenty of cartoons that are very, you have to actually be intelligent to understand. Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain, Tiny Toons, Phineas and Fur, Backyardigans. All right. Who's up? What's the DV? What's the IV? Depth is the, depth is the dependent. Yes, depth is the dependent variable. Why? Because you can't stay underwater forever. You gotta breathe. That's not really why. Okay. <laughs> Whoever said it was on the Y axis, that happens to work in this case. Do not use that as your rule because I could turn this graph on its side. So do not use that as your rule. Know what they are. Why is time independent? Because no matter what happens to the diver, time is passing. So nothing. I could sit in the water, floating on my back, looking up at the sun. Time would still pass. I could still make the graph, but my depth would be zero. So the graph would look like this. Oops. Okay. Great. Now, how long did the dive last? 30 minutes. Great. Everybody can read a graph. At what times did she stop her descent? When? From four minutes to eight minutes. And? And from 10 to 14. How did you know that? Is a flat line. Her depth stopped changing. What didn't stop? Right. Her depth stopped changing. But as Metallica says, Time marches on. 
If you are unaware of the Metallica song that has that line in it, it is For Whom the Bell Tolls. Time marches on. Great song. Great album. Actually, I think that's Metallica's best album. I've never heard of Metallica. I probably have heard of it. Ride the Lightning, I think, is Metallica's best album. What's your favorite classical record? Well, 70s Led Zeppelin. Goes without saying. What was her greatest depth? 20 meters. Now, answer me this, Batman. If she is going down underwater, why did we draw a graph that went up? Because she got to come back up to breathe, man. That's what are you talking about. Joy, her depth is increasing. A graph represents data. It does not draw a picture. I, I, if we were going to draw this as a picture, there would be ocean, there'd be a boat, and there'd be a scuba diver with flippers and another flipper and... A green wetsuit <laughs> with a yellow scuba tank <laughs> and green arms. <laughs> snorkel! They take snorkels. The snorkel hangs out over here. Everybody knows they have snorkels, even when they're scuba diving. Why so we can like bring women down there? No. How long did she spend at that depth? What's the domain and range? I don't know. You do know. The domain is the set of values that make up the independent variable. What is the lowest value of independent variable? Which in this case is time. Zero. Zero is less than or equal to what? X. No. Time. What is time. Which is less than or equal to what? Yeah. 30. 30. The range. What's the lowest range? Zero. Zero which is less than or equal to? Yeah. Depth. Which is less than or equal to? 20. 20. Good. Now we get to the lesson part of this. The first part of it I've already hinted at. Graphs are not illustrations. They are relating information. They do not depict what is happening in the real world. Okay? Excellent. Now, the next thing that is important here is... Every graph is made up of points on the graph, isn't it? For example, this point right here is 4, 12. Yes? Because it is 4 on the independent variable, 12 on the dependent variable. Yes? What is the point that it started at? 0, 0. Yes? Did both variables change? Yes, which means this change is important to us. That is what we call the rate of change. And we find that 
the same way we find all rates of change. I am going to give you a hint. The rate of change with which you are most familiar is kilometers per hour. What is that? That's a variable. That's a uh, thank you. That is a dv. And what math is that slash? That is uh, ratio. So divided by what? IV, an independent variable. If you divide a dependent variable change of 12 by an independent variable change of 4, you get an answer of 3 watts meters per minute. And that is a rate of change. That's pretty Does, it is exactly like physics. What was the fastest she was moving? Was it the yellow line, which is hard to see, the green line, which is easier to see, or the blue line? When was she moving the fastest? The green line. Why? Because she covers the most distance in the least amount of time. So as you go faster, your rate of change line will increase. Will it ever get vertical? No. No. Why? Time moves on. Well done. Will it ever go to the left on a distance time graph? No. Because you do not have a 1985 DeLorean powered by plutonium with a flux capacitor that can go 88 miles an hour and generate 1.21 gigawatts. And it is gigawatts, even though the writers of that movie said gigawatts. Okay. If any of you do not know what movie I speak of, I am sorry for you. Now, please use your knowledge that you just demonstrated to reverse the situation and tell me a story that will relate the data that this graph gives me. Go. Write a scenario that describes this graph. Go. No, because your story has something to do with submarines. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. David had soggy old water in his can. It rained out. Soggy water. He had soggy water. As opposed to that dry water that you can have in your can? I know. Dehydrated water. You add water to it and you get water. Powdered water. Brilliant. Why didn't we think of this to solve the Cape Town water crisis? We'll just send them powdered water. Was the can empty? No. No. You filled it. Then what did you do with it? You had to carry you had to go somewhere with it because time passed but the volume of water didn't change. Then what did you do? You dumped it out. That's two out of four, because that's what happened. Add more understanding to it. What more can you say, Harmon? Can you see like how many liters were in the can before, and then uh, how many um, you filled it up? That gets you three out of four. And then include the time that it took. Now that's four out of four. So a four out of four answer here would be 
I filled my partially full watering can Yep, at a rate of how much did I add in? Three quarters of a liter in 30 seconds, right? So just wait. 0.75 liters per 30 seconds. Is that really how we measure speed? No. No, when I'm driving down the highway, do I say, well, I'm going 300 kilometers per three hours? What? No, what do I do? 100 kilometers per hour. This needs to be a single one, right? So, no, we don't go, I'm driving 60 kilometers per 10 hours. No, this needs to be a unit rate. So it either needs to be, what would be a good rate there? Seconds or minutes? Seconds would require dividing that by 30. Can you do that in your head? No. How would you make it a minute? How many minutes times two? If I multiply that by two, I get one minute. If I multiply that by two, 1.5 liters per minute. At a rate of 1.5 liters per minute. I then walked to my sister who was sunbathing and dumped water on her at a rate of negative 1.75 in 10, 20 seconds. So 1.75 times three to get up to a minute, right? 5.25 liters per minute on her. That's what I would have done. Dumped? Oh, I wrote on her twice. Does everybody understand? Does everybody get it? Yeah. All right. Now, you are going to attempt to do what I just have done twice. Listen to me. Listen very carefully. Every one of you already has all the mathematical tools you need to draw this graph properly. But a bunch of you are going to screw it up. So when you attempt to draw this graph, talking with your neighbor, draw it in pencil. Because you are probably going to make an error. In my experience, this graph is done poorly by the majority of the students on their first try. Go. No. We do not want to hear your story. On the horizontal axis. Time. In what unit? Hours. Hours. What would I graph on the y axis? Distance. In what unit? kilometers at zero time how far is he from home zero. zero the line starts there one two oops I wanted to do them blue one two three four five six seven yeah Okay, and I'm going to send my distance up in, uh, I'm going to go up by 25. Okay. 
Is everybody cool? All right. What do I know about the first two hours of the trip? Constant speed of 140 kilometers in two hours, yes? So my next point is going to be at 2, 140, yes? And since he is traveling constant, we draw a nice straight line. Now, is that really how we drive? No, Not unless his, his driveway goes onto the highway, right? But we're going to say it's constant, yes? How fast was he going? 70 kmh. Agreed? Excellent. What then happened? So this is A. He then visited his grandmama. Why does it stay flat? He's not changing distance, but time marches on. How long? One hour. So here I am out at three. Is everybody okay to there? Excellent. Now, where does the line go? Harmon says the line goes down. Marley says the line goes up. Read what it says. It says distance versus time. So I'm counting distance, yes? It, up. it continues to go up. Come on, so, 50 kilometers, but stops 30 minutes for supper. Do we assume he goes at the same speed of 70 kilometers an hour? He has to go Do we assume that? Yeah. It doesn't tell us otherwise, so let's assume that. So it would be the same angle, right? 50 kilometers back towards home. He's 140 kilometers away from home. So he's going to go up at the same distance. Same. Is it going to take quite an hour? No, if he's going 70 kilometers an hour and he only goes 50K, he's not going to take quite an hour, is he? Everyone agree? So we're at there. Then what happens? He takes 30 minutes for supper, yeah? Which means he's not doing any distance, right? So there's C. And then he returns home taking two more hours. Is the line going to be steeper or less steep than here? Less steep. Less steep. Significantly less steep. Why? He's taking longer to go the same amount of, to go less distance, right? Because he only took two hours to get all the way to grandma's. He's already done 50 of the Ks back home. He's done a third of the trip, hasn't he? So this has to flatten out for two more hours. There's D. Does everyone understand? Everyone understands? Now, what if I told you I want a displacement graph? What is the only change? Oh, what? Yes, it would be the same line, but downwards. Okay, now, if you are saying, what? Like my good friend over there is, what do you think all that white space is for? To explain that, yeah. all right? Distance is what we call scalar. That means it only has a magnitude. And that magnitude is a value. So, observe. Everybody watching? How many, how far in distance 
have I traveled when I stop moving? Three meters above nine. Three what? Steps. Steps. Oh. Everybody agree? Six. I moved six steps. Now, if you were blindfolded and you opened your eyes now, would it look like I moved? No, because my displacement is zero. It is physics. All right. So distance is scalar. It only has a value and that value is usually positive. We don't bother talking about it as anything but, right? Think of your car. When you drive your car to school, the odometer goes up. If you drive home in reverse, the car does not go down. Just see Ferris Bueller. It doesn't happen. I, 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 was, I was thinking that. Now, displacement... <laughs> is a vector, which means it has magnitude and direction. Now, there's a problem with this. In real life, there is an infinite amount of ways to describe directions, aren't there? Up, down, east, west, diagonally. You can go through the Z axis. I can move up, backwards, and that way, can't I? My head right now is going to move through all three of those. See? It went up, back, and to your left. So, let me ask you this. In math, on a graph, how many... Options do I have? Four? Two. What are the two directions available to me in math? No. Positive and negative. That is it. So in math, we are restricted... to positive and negative, negative directions. So we have decided, every math and physics person got together and decided this stuff. Positive means away. If you're moving away from where you start, that is positive. If you are moving north, if you are moving east, if you are moving up, if you are moving forward, if you are moving to the right, that's all I can think of right now, but you understand what I am saying, yes? Negatives are the reverses. Back to start. South, west, down. Backwards, left. left, everybody cool? So now I need you to think very carefully. From your perspective, what is my distance when I stop moving? Negative five four. Negative four. Wrong. Distance, five. What is my displacement from your perspective? Negative five. From my perspective? Positive five, because I moved to my right. Put it all together, positive five is what we would go with because I moved five steps away from my starting point. Everybody cool? Distance. 10. Displacement. 
negative five from there, positive five, depending on whose perspective it was at. Total displacement, zero. Now what? Distance, 12. Displacement, from your, for your perspective, positive two, because it's to the right. For my perspective, negative two. Total displacement, negative two, because I've moved away from my start point again. Everybody cool? But, Jalem, my starting point was set right there. So because I had moved back to my original starting point at zero, then moved away again in this direction, I have to say negative. Okay. Is everybody good? Yeah? yeah? Everyone? Sweet! Okay. I don't know, Luke. I'll tell you what. I'll see the future right now. It's like I've done this joke. I got nothing. Describe a scenario for that graph. Be careful. Feel free. Are you sure you don't want to put some powdered water in there first? <laughs> Just add some water to it, get some more water. <laughs> so, are we good here? This should already be done. How many sentences do you need to describe this graph? Three, why? Because there's three things happening. What is happening in the first part, which I'm going to draw in red? She's traveling at four meters per second. No. She's accelerating from standing still up to eight meters per second. Oh. So, in the first part, she starts with a speed of zero and takes two seconds to reach top speed of what? Of eight meters per second. Then what happens in blue? She maintains eight meters per second for how long? for 12 seconds, and then what happens? What happened at 14 seconds? Cross the finish line. Crosses line at 14 seconds and slows down. Somebody always says, but she stopped, why didn't it go straight? Why didn't it go straight? It's a tape, it's not a wall. It would not be as exciting in the Olympics if Usain Bolt hit a wall. Would it? No. Everybody understand? Now listen to me. Page 181, 5678. That's your homework. Okay? because you all want to go on to checking or to some review before your cumulative, which means I got to mark a few tests. So you got to work on five, six, seven, eight. Okay? They're tricky.